In parts of East Asia, live bee sting therapy is commonly believed as a traditional medicine for several types of illnesses. For example, eczema. The protein melitin from bee venom has been studied to have a healing effect on eczema. But there are also cases when the therapy creates unfavorable outcomes, where instead of healing, the sting develops inflammatory swelling that lasts months after the procedure. How can this be? When a bee stings, small parts of its stinger are left inside the skin. As with other foreign substances, it triggers the immune system. The macrophages are recruited to the site and are activated to disarm the perceived invader. This innate immune system activity leads to inflammation. If the initial response fails, the macrophages release signaling chemicals to invite more macrophages to enter the site and engulf the foreign substance in order to isolate it and prevent it from spreading further into the body. Some of the macrophages are elongated and turning into epithelioid cells with less defined cell borders and can form tight junctions, effectively walling the foreign substance inside. Some others combine together to form the multinucleated giant cells, whose nuclei are scattered inside or taking the shape of a horseshoe, called Langan's giant cells. Nearby cells can also signal other immune molecules to join, such as lymphocytes, eosinophils, and dendritic cells. The lymphocytes secrete substances that help the cells aggregate, further strengthening the barrier. If the fibroblast and collagen are present, then it indicates the cell aggregates have been formed for a while. This big lump of cells is called granuloma. Granulomatous inflammation is formed as the last effort of the immune system to contain the foreign body or antigen when they're unable to destroy it. Granulomas are often accidentally found during imaging for other reasons. It's not cancerous and it can be found inside the body, such as in the lungs, heart or liver, and on the skin, which appears as bumps in a ring pattern, line or scattered. Under the microscope, different types of granuloma have distinct histologic patterns of tissue reaction. The non-caseating or non-necrotizing granuloma is characterized by widespread and concentric layers of epithelioid cells and other surrounding cells. It is mostly indicative of inflammatory diseases and foreign body presence, such as the bee sting we talked about before, splinters and sutures. Possible inflammatory diseases the doctor may screen for, including sarcoidosis, the disease causes numerous granulomas to grow around multiple organs in the body, such as the lungs, heart and eyes. The scientists are unsure of its cause, but it may be a response to some unknown foreign substance, or even the body's own cells. Crohn's disease is a type of inflammatory condition that causes granulomatous inflammation in the colon. The formation is less compact, marked with Schumann bodies inside the giant cells and surrounded by inflammatory cells mainly lymphocytes. Another granuloma-related disease is Hansen's disease, or leprosy, caused by a bacteria called Mycobacterium leprae. A strong immune reaction is more likely to suppress and contain the bacterial infections, leading to only mild symptoms and multiple granulomas, which are fairly large and dry or scaly, localized in the face or hand. However, the bacteria spreads to the whole body instead and significantly increases the number of lesions which have a more shiny appearance and are smaller in diameter if the immune system reacts poorly during the infection. The structure of the granuloma suffers modifications from the multiplying bacteria, reducing the number of macrophages around the site and creating a more sparse formation of epithelioid cells. A worse outcome is expected if not medicated regularly or if the patient develops drug resistance. To treat the non-necrotizing granuloma, doctors prescribe ointments to cure the skin lesion and antibiotics to take care of the underlying cause. Thanks to our evolved genes, most adults in this modern age have a natural immunity to this bacteria. The second type of granuloma is called a necrotizing granuloma. Its histologic pattern is similar to the first type, except at the center of the granuloma, which appears acellular under the microscope because of the buildup of disintegrated macrophage cell debris. If examined, the necrotic mass shows a cheese-like appearance and consistency, hence it's also called a caseous granuloma. Besides fungal infections such as Candida albicans and Histoplasma capsulatum, this type of immune response is most commonly found in patients with tuberculosis. During tuberculosis infection, the intracellular pathogens, which prefer the cytoplasm of host cells to live and replicate, let themselves be eaten by the macrophage while producing protein kinase G that protects them from being fused with the macrophage's lysosome, 
Granuloma is then formed around the infected macrophages to disable more attacks in other areas. Later, the infected cells in the middle of the granuloma eventually die and the area is necrotized. Granuloma in tuberculosis is also known as tuberculoma or gonfocus. When the granuloma is carried and expanded to the adjacent hilar or long root lymph nodes, they become gon complex. The calcification of the gon complex forms the ranker complex, which allows for better detection in X-ray. The bacteria in containment activate survival mode and lie dormant inside the body. Later, when the immune system is weakened due to age or conditions like AIDS, it may spring back into action and reinfect the individual, which is called secondary tuberculosis. That is why the treatment for tuberculosis involved more than two types of antibiotics spanning months, even years.